Hello class. Another aspect of NMR is something that's called integration. We're going to integrate the signals on the NMR. And so it's going to involve calculus, but lucky for us, the computer and the NMR instrument does all the integration for us. So we don't have to actually do it. But we will have to interpret the integration results to figure out what they mean. Now, what what is the integration is right here is a peak or a signal on an NMR spectrum. But when we look at an NMR spectrum, it kind of just looks like just lines. But that's because those lines are actually not lines. They're actually peaks that look like this. It's just they're very, very narrow. So if we kind of zoom in just a little bit, you'll see a peak, but it's actually kind of like that. So you can see some area there. All right? So that's not just a line. Now this is just zoomed in really, really well. Now what the machine does is it's going to put a integral trace, which is shown in blue right there. That is an integral uh, trace. And that integral trace is going to help us figure out the area under that curve. Now, why do we care about calculating the area under the curve so much? Well, it has to do with this answer right here in the grayed out box. The area under the absorption peak is going to be proportional to the number of protons that generate the peak. So the key feature here is proportional. It is not going to tell us the exact number of protons is going to tell us the proportion of protons. So when you have, uh, and I'll talk about that in a minute, what that actually means. Okay. So let's look at an example here. So what if we had an NMR with three signals? Okay. We need to figure out the area under the absorption peak. Okay. And so what you're going to do is you're going to take a ruler or some kind of measuring device and you're going to identify your peaks. There's one peak, two peak, three peaks. And if we call that peak one, peak two, and peak three, what you're going to do is right before the peak, you're going to find that the blue line or the integration line is plateaued there. And on the right side of the peak, the blue integration line plateaus there. So what you're going to do is kind of extrapolate out and you're going to measure the distance there. Okay. So on peak two, we have right there, right there, extrapolate out. That's a bad extrapolation there. And then measure the distance. Now that, and you do that for all the peaks. Now, the measurement does not matter. It can be in inches, centimeters, millimeters. It does not matter as long as each measurement is the same unit. Okay, So the, you'll measure those out. And lo and behold, we have one millimeter, two millimeters, and three millimeters. So that is not necessarily saying that this is one hydrogen, this is two, this is three. It is a ratio or a proportion. So what that's saying is the proportion is one to two to three. So this molecule could, if you add up these numbers here, could mean that you have six hydrogens. But it also could mean if we multiplied every number there by, let's say, two, it could be any multiple. Then the proportion would be two to four to six. All right. And so that would be 12 hydrogens. Gration is telling us.
is the proportion. So this molecule could have six hydrogens, 12 hydrogens, and so forth. Whatever number you choose to multiply it by. Okay? Now, one way to confirm how many total protons you have, the mass spec can help us figure that out. Okay? But we will look at an example where we look at an NMR spectrum, the mass spec and the IR spectrum all together to figure out how to understand what a molecule looks like. But right now we're just learning about the NMR part. Okay, so that's how you figure out the integration. What if we had a situation where you measured the integration and you found that you have 10 millimeters for the first peak there, 10 millimeters there, and then 15 millimeters there. So if you simplify that down, so the proportion is 10 to 10 to 15, right? Now if you divide that down and simplify that, what do we have? If we divide every term by 10, we would get a proportional of 1 to 1 to 1.5. Okay, so that's the simplified one. Now that one looks a, a little weird because if we added all that up, what would we have? We would have 3.5 protons. Protons are hydrogens. And that's impossible to have three and a half protons. You can't take a proton and chop it in half, right? That's impossible. So what you have to do when you encounter situations like this, you're going to have to take the most simplified form and multiply it by a whole number to give us a proportion with the smallest amount of, of whole numbers. So if we take this proportion and multiply it by 2, then we'd see the proportion, it would be 2, 2, 3. So that would be what, 4 plus 3, that would be 7 protons. So what that's saying is that this signal right here integrates for two hydrogens. That signal right there integrates for two. And that integrates for three. Or it's a multiple of that proportion. So it could have been, it's not a guarantee that it's seven protons, but if I took that and multiplied it by two, it could be four to four to six, right? So that would mean that this, sorry, this signal right there integrates for four, that integrates for four, and then that integrates for six. So that's a very important part when we're trying to determine the structure of our molecules, we use the integration to do so. All right? And we will practice this in class.